What's up guys? Welcome back to the home slice. I'm here in front of the shed. Come to think of it, it's a very Pete-esque background, isn't it? But uh, I wanted to bring you guys a video of sort of my current best guess at why a dual grid edge performs differently from other sorts of edges. Now there's members of the scientific community, like the actual scientific community, who are working on some research on this, and I'm really excited to actually find out what's, what's going on there at the edge apex. But waiting upon the real scientists can't stop the bro science from going on, and so <laughs> I have actually constructed a wood model. Uh, this side is chopped with a drop saw, um, and then this side has big, coarser uh, texture ground out of it, trying to fade it out there at the tip to simulate a dual grit edge that has been stropped and then realigned. In the microscope images I've seen by Pavel Sandor and others, it looks as if the edge is smooth at the apex. There's not big scoops out of the apex. So this is my best reproduction of the effect you get with a dual grit edge. I've got two of them here. This one's a bit less perfect. We took some scoops out there, but I reckon, okay, first off, I know that like micro physics are not like macro physics. I know that metal is not wood. I know that rope is not sandpaper. Okay, so <laughs> just to get that out of the way, I'm not trying to perform real science here, but what I thought would be interesting was to model something life size, big, larger than life size, um, that that mimics the shape of a dual grit edge and then to do some different things in it and then at the end of it share with you my current best guesses as to why it actually performs the way it does. So there's a couple things that go on at the edge when, when it's cutting something. The whole surface experiences some light abrasion that wears away some of the metal. Um, that's one thing that happens and we'll probably mimic that by taking the saw and just like slicing just a hair off of each side and then seeing what the edge looks like after that. Another thing that happens is the compression from the material being forced around this edge creates a, a harder material up here at the apex. It hardens the material and then it wears away at the apex. So we'll take a piece of flexible sandpaper and I'll just wear away at this in as many random directions as I can, as I can make happen and we'll see what the edge looks like after that. And the third thing that happens is there's actually chipping or flattening or the, the structures here can break. And so I'll actually take the table saw and just chop one of these off at the tip and then we'll look at what the structure underneath looks like. So hopefully this gives us some good data. I have some thoughts already that I'd like to share with you guys, but I figured this would be a fun way to visualize it and have some fun bro science. So here we go. All right, here is our edge after some abrasion. And here is the original sort of edge. You can see the keenness of that apex has definitely changed. I noticed that the edges on other microscope footage, um, they are straight. I'm not sure whether that's because of like this effect that I've mimicked here, like the strop takes off the noses of the teeth, or whether it's because of a burnishing effect along the other side where the strop actually pulls metal from the rest of the fine edge into the gaps. I'm not really sure. You'd need a real scientist for that. Things that are immediately apparent. Um, the worn edge is smoother. It's rounder. We'll get a side shot here. Um, you can sort of see it has rounded ever so slightly versus the original, very pointed apex. You do find, however, that even though it feels more round, a difference that can be really felt is that in this you can't really feel the depressions of these grooves 
in this one, it's very evident that these grooves are actually presenting a thinner bit of apex even when worn away. Does that make sense? So this, the whole apex is really thin, but this, when it's worn, it actually begins to present thinner pieces of apex to the edge still, retaining that sort of keen character. Hopefully that makes sense. Next we'll take it to the saw and we'll knock off um, a little bit to mimic full edge abrasion and we'll see what happens. This one's pretty easy to see, just with the naked eye. I'm not probably gonna bother grabbing the macro lens to show you the fine detail. Um, the forces that don't like compress the tip, but just kind of abrade the surface as a whole, I would guess that they have pretty normal effect on a dual grit edge. This, remember, would be rounded, like the sanding that I've just done. It wouldn't be sharp like this, but you can see it's actually lessening the difference between the coarse side and the fine side. This, this coarse side is beginning to look closer to the edge, like the fine side. So, I don't know, I guess it would be my guess that the forces of abrasion in general don't have a specific effect, but the mechanics of apex wear do have a specific effect like we just saw. Lastly, this one's pretty toast, but I'm gonna take this one and we'll just zip off the top to see what edge damage and chipping simulation kind of does to it overall. Okay guys, this is with the tip chopped off and I've really quickly hit it with sandpaper just like I did the first time. I actually had a video where I showed you without the sandpaper, but I uh, accidentally took the whole thing in HD slow motion, so that's not going to do us much good. But this really highlights where my theories about dual grit are headed, okay? And what I think is that when that apex is worn away, and it's exposed to those wearing forces, if you look down this apex, there's portions at every valley where it's almost as thin as the original apex, so it still mimics the cutting action of a fine edge. There's also portions where it has thickened, and I believe at these thickened portions, it has greater support for holding carbides up at the edge. And so you've got this scattering of two sort of ideals. You've, you've got some fine spots, and then you've got some spots that can hold the carbides, which will make your edge last a lot longer. Sorry, the uh, note where I explained that the the blue sharpie is kind of my best representation of what's the edge apex. I took a blue sharpie along the top and it just highlights the spots that when you run your hand across it as a flat surface that you can feel. And that's where that shaping was coming into play. Um, this is the other one that I made a mistake on if you want to see like a rough idea of what it li looked like before the sandpaper. Um, similar effect but just a little less rounding. I wanted to do the rounding to simulate both of the elements of wear at once. Anyway, this is where my theory with dual grit sharpening is headed at the moment. It will be fun when the scientists chime in and we'll see, I can either laugh at myself and how wrong I was or um, be kind of excited that some of my theories were on the right track or held water. But I think that at the beginning, it's got a normal edge apex. And even in Pete's test, he was like, oh, this is cutting like a fine edge at the beginning. I think that as you wear it away, it creates a false coarse edge. And it's like it actually has two edges built into it. And the original apex lasts almost as long as a normal fine edge apex because it's supported by these big wavy structures, which actually give some rigidity to it. But then once it's worn away, it gives way to this sort of hybrid edge where there's portions of it that are still fine but there's portions of it that are thicker that hold these big carbides right out there at the edge and give you um, 
like almost another full edge worth of edge retention when all is said and done. That's kind of what I'm thinking at the moment. I hope you guys enjoyed that. I hope you guys have tried this and that it's really causing you to have more fun with your knife edges. But that's about all I got to say today. You guys are awesome. Have a great one. And for now, I'll just say, hey, peace out from the home slice.